we are seeing a seismic rotation in the stock market from mega caps to small caps. This new trend has been the name of the headlines for the past few days, ever since CPI inflation came in lower than expected last week. And as for exactly how low it came, well, for the first time since the pandemic in March of 2020, month-over-month change was negative for the CPI metric. This, folks, is a huge deal and is one of the many reasons why we are starting to see a shift towards smaller and more unprofitable companies. Yeah, although inflation wasn't transitory over a 12-month span, at least for a five-year cycle, clearly inflation is starting to fall aggressively. And let's be honest, you really did need to be an expert to figure this out. This could have been seen coming from a mile away. The effects of the pandemic clearly resulted in excess demand and constricted supply, with those effects easing as time goes on. And right now, those effects are starting to benefit something like the Russell 2000 Small Cap Index the most, because finally we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Not only was June 2024 the first month since October of 2020 that no rate hikes occurred globally, but July, which is the month we're in right now, also happens to be one of the most bullish months of the entire year, not to mention that those election years are some of the best for markets in history. This inflation at this point is only remaining in certain subsectors of living expenses, particularly in rents, housing, and auto insurance, which is up a whopping almost 20% year over year. However, goods which are comprised of autos, toys, technology, electronics are starting to fall significantly as production capacity is finally starting to outpace demand at the retail level. And this right here is fantastic news for the Federal Reserve, who overestimated the amount of time it would take for the economy to reach equilibrium. That overestimation is exactly what led us to 22-year highs in interest rates in the American economy and obviously tightening levels that we haven't seen since potentially the financial crisis. But the good news is with the new inflation report, expectations of the Fed reducing interest rates more aggressively have started to go up. And well, what kind of stocks will this benefit the most? Nothing more than small companies that represent Main Street instead of Wall Street. What's happened over the past three and a half years, folks, is truly impeccable. A certain type of company, particularly those that are unprofitable, smaller cap, and have more debt, have been underperforming the average S&P 500 index by the widest margin in all-time history. At a time where the Nasdaq and the S&P have had some of their best starts to the year on record, small caps were barely green for the year, with more than a 35 basis point or percentage outperformance by the big cap names. This trend was exacerbated by the outperformance of NVIDIA and large cap names in the AI space driven by semiconductor innovation as well, leading to some of the heaviest of heaviest companies leading the charge and the rest 493 companies actually barely outperforming the index. And well, the Russell 2000 having 31% of the index being unprofitable was one of the worst performing, with it being essentially flat since the start of 2021. But just like everything in the stock markets, this isn't going to last forever. And we're starting to see signs of a real trend change right now, with the small caps having posted their best week in more than 12 months. As you can see, just today, before the market has even closed, the Russell 2000 index is up 3.4%, whereas the NASDAQ is up only 0.16% and was, at certain parts of the day, actually red. This severe divergence can also be clearly seen in a heat map 
of the S&P 500, where the big names with the heaviest weight happen to be red, whereas the smaller names with industrials, consumer defensives, and even healthcare all being green by a pretty significant margin. As a matter of fact, the breakout we're seeing is textbook for the Russell 2K, with it being up almost 12% in just five trading days and breaking out of a very tight range that it's been stuck in for since 2022. As you can see, it made a lot of strides to the downside, while the S&P 500 was actually going up every single month. We had a bear market that capitulated at the end of last year, and then we saw a nice rally up to this resistance area where a lot of consolidation happened for a few months. But now finally, after four years of tumultuous underperformance, we're starting to see a broadening out of the new bull market. What's more is that this rally is being led primarily by regional banks as a signal that the underlying economy is starting to improve. These small companies are much more indicative of what's happening on Main Street instead of high margin software companies, because these companies happen to also be the most affected by interest rates. All these factors are really coming together, folks, to create an exciting opportunity for markets going into the end of the year. A lot of catalysts in the favor of the bulls, and particularly for those that have struggled the most over the past few years in the small cap sector. Brazil, folks, that is just my take on the situation. So let me know your thoughts on the situation down in the comment section below. And thank you very much for watching. Take care.